Yeah. Up in the sky. Up in the sky. Jesse and I are on our way to Rev Table. We call it the Rev Table because we believe that we hear from the Lord together. We get to share our lives, share our experiences, and that kind of leads me into the question for the day, which is from Joshua Verwers. He asked me if I was ever in the military. Oh! This is Good Friday and the laying down of your life for your friend, John 15. Well, as soon as he said that, I was actually thinking about my military days and the literal laying down of my life, of others' lives, the potential. Let's just say that, I'm not like I'm, I'm not resurrected. Surprise. The potential laying down of our lives for one another, and then he asked the question, was I ever in the military? Did I ever experience that? And uh, I think we're going to talk about that today. What do you think? That sounds like fun. Let's do it. The quick answer to your question for this windstorm is that, uh, is that I was in the military. I was in the United States Air Force. I was a C-130. That's the big cargo plane with the propellers on it. It's awesome, if you don't know. I was a C-130 Loadmaster, which means we airdropped people, we airdropped machinery, equipment, stuff into hot landing zones, places where you couldn't land, and sometimes we did land. Hold on. Wild blue yonder flying high. Am I doing it right? Yeah, Up in the sky, up in the sky. Uh, that was her favorite <laughs> part of the whole Air Force experience. She got to sing the song. Still is, apparently. We didn't take a lot of risks because I have nobody to cover me. But when I finally found Doug White, I just started taking risks because I had Doug to watch me. Here's what I think the Lord's saying. Here's what we did about it. And honestly, honestly, Doug would go, oh, that doesn't sound like God. And we would pray and he goes, oh my gosh, that is God. And I know it's God because I would never give you that advice. You kept making me do things, but under authority, and since you have his authority, and the thing is, you'll make more mistakes, but you're covered because you're under authority. Why did we turn off the light? I actually made a video about this. On the comments below. Oh, yeah, 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 here, here. Why don't you tell there's them where a, it is? There's a link to it in the comments below. Or it'll be up here. I actually or made a video here. about all of that stuff a couple months back. But since most of you are new to the channel, we'll make another one. And since Josh asked, what a wing stop. Hey. What? Um. I forgot all my stuff inside the church. What's been fun about telling people oh. about my oh hi, hey. I'm shooting a video. You Jared, talk on your Jared phone if you just, want to. About my military experience. <laughs> get out of here. Get out. Get out of here. Here, get one last smolder in. <laughs> see I'm you out. See you. Bye. Have fun. There was a huge part of my life. That was some of the richest connections and relationships that I had. There's actually one of my best friends, uh, Luke, shout out Luke. We were friends, best friends. We shared an apartment together, but it wasn't until we deployed together and really put our lives on the line that we, hi, right, Jesse's here. Hey. That our bond became like unshakable. There were certain times where like, when you live with somebody, whenever you work with somebody, when you eat with somebody, when you fly with somebody, and you put your lives on the line together, uh, you could be screaming, which we did, at the top of our lungs at one another, which we did, and you could truly be communicating. There's nowhere they could go, because you're family, you're invested. I remember one night in particular, when he and I, we were resupplying a unit in the hills in Afghanistan, and we were flying over, we had A-10 support and whatever, and folks were shooting, it was going off like crazy, and we had a malfunction in the back of our plane. I'm not going to tell the whole story because he's still active, he's still in, and we had to do, I don't want you to get in trouble, Luke. Some creative problem solving with our load with our plane so that we could resupply these troops with the ammunition they needed because they were being overrun. There was a moment there where the pilot and the, the co-pilot called back to the back and they're like, what's going on? Do we need to call this off? And Luke and I looked at one another and we realized that if we if we went back in, it potentially meant our job. It potentially meant our lives and the lives of the crew because a plane needs to perform at a certain, it's Loadmaster stuff. It's a long story. We knew that it was gonna cost us. We knew that it was gonna be a significant risk. And we looked at one another and we almost didn't even have to say anything because we'd been working with each other. We knew each other's hearts and we just went for it. We creatively came up with something, something that worked, something that resupplied the troops and something that kept us from crashing. I'm really proud of that night. I'm really proud of the bond that 
came about between Luke and I. It's one of those things when I just have to mention that story and I and I know that Luke knows the emotions of the night, the thrill of the night, the, the sense of like overcoming whenever all the load went out and we heard the voices and the screams of the, the troops on the ground who were celebrating that they weren't going to die. Just a real huge sense of accomplishment. Yeah, you can't, you can't manufacture that. And th there's just a knitting together at the heart when you decide to lay down your lives for one another. It's more than family. Luke and I will forever be connected because of a choice that he and I made together to lay down our lives for one another and for the greater cause. That's really what happens in the body of Christ. When we're together and we realize what God's calling us to and we count the cost that it might cost us everything. It might cost us our lives, our reputations, our careers, and we're still willing to do it. It knits us together at the heart. Who you guys saw just a minute ago in this episode, they're actually my new unit. They're my new brothers and sisters. The ones who are being knit together my heart with theirs, their heart with mine, our hearts with Jesus's, we truly would lay our lives down for one another. It's a family. It's a family affair. There you are, Joshua. Military man, got that right. Strong relationships, miss those relationships, haven't found those relationships until the church, until people who are willing to sacrifice it all, risk it all for one another, lay down their lives for one another, and for Jesus. Found those relationships. Super glad to be a part of that family. My question for you is this, Joshua. What is your favorite miracle in the Bible? Mine's the resurrection. Jesse's was actually the, the woman who touches the hem of his garment. She loves that one because it kind of tells a little bit about who you are. She doesn't like form and structure. She's reached out. And, and touched his garment, and he did what he naturally does. But more in a minute. So Jesse likes the... Oh, I can tell him about you it. You tell him about it. In the wind. Not in the wind, just tell him. Oh, okay. My Love favorite me. miracle... I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm really tired. Hold on. My favorite miracle was when the woman touched... My hair. She didn't touch my hair. When the woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment and she was healed instantly. Like, what? And I love that story because there's no formula, there's no form, there's no like, follow these certain steps. She was just healed by being in his presence. I think sometimes we get stuck in like, oh, we have to lay on hands or we have to use oil or we have to pray a certain way. And we don't. We just have to be in God's presence and we're healed. That's cool. Why don't you ask Josh the question? Joshua, I want to know what your favorite Jesus miracle in the Bible is. Like, comment, and subscribe. All the three. We love you. Oh. And we'll see you. We're going to take naps. In the next one. That's spilled everywhere. That's spilled everywhere. I don't know why I'm tired. I think it's the French fries. She doesn't ever eat carbs. Uh, well, not very many. And we had cheese fries for lunch, and she is certain that that is what is driving her into a carb coma. I'm sure. You want to see what a country traffic jam looks like? They don't pull over, and since it's a country road, you can't pass them. Country traffic jam. I'm a man.